his head smoke, uh, he could head smoke receivers, and uh, he could hold the edge and he could tackle. And I uh, really did a good job for us over with uh, our football team. And uh, I think I started our playoff runs when uh, Philip was there with us. Uh, in baseball, uh, I had a pleasure of coaching in baseball, assistant baseball coach. And uh, he played uh, infield for us, shortstop mainly. And uh, I know uh, Trace and I had the JV game, and he made really an outstanding play in the shortstop. And I said, that's just like Felipe Lopez, the shortstop of the Cincinnati Reds. And to this day, I still want to call him Felipe Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of stuck in my mind, and that's, that's kind of where I, I go with it. Um, he was on the, the uh, state tournament team his uh, sophomore, junior, senior year. Uh, we qualified for the state tournament. And uh, one of those years, he was actually uh, an all-state uh, all-tournament team uh, at the state playoffs. And then the wrestling. Uh, I had the pleasure of coaching Philip actually the first time he was in, in uh, elementary school in one of our youth league teams. And uh, he was probably second, third grade, maybe fourth. I, I probably second, third grade or someplace. He was on one of the teams with my son Justin was on one of the teams I helped coach. And uh, his attention span, well, I won't go where it was, but I know that you know, he was all in the place on the mat. It went too long that your mother was out there with you. She would watch what we were doing and make sure you were doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, I tell you that right now. And then uh, in high school, just had an outstanding group. Uh, he won 160 matches at Women's High School. Uh, a three time All State wrestler. Uh, he was fourth uh, as a sophomore in her 12 pound class. His junior year, uh, he was fourth at 119. And there was a match in there that, uh, you know, just so close. I mean, it was very, very close. It was in the uh, semis against a wrestler from uh, Berkeley Springs and ended up losing 4 3. She won that match for a chance for us for state title. We were close. And then uh, senior year, uh, lost in the quarters. I think it began to uh, a wrestler from Berkeley Springs in final. We got to the state finals. And it was one of those things where it was a game of inches. That's basically what it was. Uh, the, the wrestler from uh, Berkeley Springs set out hard, and Philip reached across, and the fingers just touched. And gave up that one penalty point, and then the one escape. Battle, battle, battle to get the takedown. But come back and really in the, in the semifinals consolation had a bar burn with a wrestler from Oakland. I think he had a 10 shot, if I remember right. Uh, he was a uh, Boston State champion come year or two before. And, and uh, Philip ended up beating him in overtime, uh, 2 0. And uh, tough match there, but had a little easier match in the semis out of the finals in consolation. Uh, third place as a, a senior. And just really had an outstanding career. Phil had the ability, uh, pound for pound, probably is one of the strongest wrestlers that I've, I've coached. Uh, he had the ability to take a god awful single leg shot and get flat on his belly. And I tell you what, to build a base and to finish a single leg or double leg from there is very, very difficult. But Phil would do it. Matter of fact, he relied on it a little too much sometimes. I kind of got aggravated. I think it was the WSAZ tournament your senior year. And maybe against uh, Lusher from Huntington High in the semis, and you beat him, I think he stay running up in triple A. And I'm all over Philip. You know, uh, get the takedown, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're down here by one, let's get that takedown, get after it, and then went out of bounds, and then I'm all over him. And there's about, I don't know, a minute left in the match, and he's down by one, and I'm after him, I get that takedown right now, and he looks and says, Now, coach, we still got a minute, let's wait till about 15 seconds, and I'll finish it then. That's all right, Philip. You know, he, he played it way one. He got to take it. Uh, I have to say, really, it's a pleasure for me to coach him. And he just had an outstanding career in the in high school. That's what our first inductee is still about. Wow.
that probably wouldn't even remember or recall. So that's that's just a testament to what a great, awesome coach you were to have. So I appreciate that. Um, so I just want to start out and say good evening. Uh, appreciate being in town this weekend. Um, shout out to Jim Tatterson and the whole team for putting this together. It's great to see everyone and who's home in this community and the familiar faces and friends and coaches and family. So uh, you all really put together a great weekend. It makes the guy feel good, so I appreciate that. Uh, also want to say it's an honor to be inducted with this year's 2019 class. Um, so after reading the stats and the achievements, um, the class that I'm getting inducted with is, is really impressive. So um, it's an honor to me to be inducted with you all. Two of the members, Tessa Wyant and Gary Mitchell actually graduated in 2009. So I went to the uh, state championship game where Tessa was pitching and, and watched her, I think it was in Parkersburg, uh, hit a home run and, and clinch that game. Uh, so she was an incredible athlete and um, it's good to watch her perform. And then Derek Mitchell as well. Uh, so I, I grew up with Derek and felt like I was always chasing him. So, and that was throw back to middle school. So it's football accomplishments just really speak to themselves and he's just an unbelievable uh, athlete to watch and, and, and coach for sure. So I remember the, the state finals match with Jake Justice and he getting that big championship win and that was awesome to, to witness and celebrate with you and we had a good time with that. And, um, along with sports, growing up I, I chased him on four wheelers. So we used to ride four wheelers together. And with four wheelers now it's snowboarding. So last one we got in Montana. I was chasing him down on Black Diamond and trying to keep up with him there. So I feel like I've always been chasing this guy. Um, and now I'm chasing him into the Hall of Fame, so it's, it's pretty cool and I appreciate our friendship and, and, uh, and being a teammate growing up. So that athletics started for me when I was five years old. Um, my parents introduced me to T-ball, and it was a sport that stuck with me ever since. And then from there, a couple years later, uh, I got exposed to wrestling, and I was with the, the Ordnance Bulldogs, I met Coach Doris, and then and I would say I was probably an average performer in both sports and then probably above average in crying and pouting and throwing gear and helmets and storming off and as this coach said, mom chasing me across the mat because I wasn't paying attention. But fortunately, the coaches and the community and my parents worked with me and helped turn those poor behaviors into more positive performance on and off the field. And that's really what this is all about. So it's I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all the coaches and this community and my teammates like Derek and, and so forth to, to help motivate me and inspire me to, to give my 100% best. <clears throat> so I want to recognize those folks. So the individuals that helped coach and develop me along the way, clear back to summer league ball and, and wrestling tournaments with Steve Cavender, Dave McClung, Todd Burris, Troy Krebs, for all the little league baseball games and practices and summer league trips that we made across West Virginia. Dave Herford, Dave Darst, Mike Landers, Joe B, John Bonecutter, Dave Bonecutter, Jed Odd, Dave Withrow, Tracy McCormick, Alex Reed, Joanne Collin, and Jack Collin. So that was wrestling from, again, clear back to the ordinance days up through middle school and then high school. And then baseball, uh, Jamie Higginbotham and Bill Buchanan. So that was part of our leading uh, our baseball team to the, the state playoffs for the first time in 30 plus years. And then for football playoffs, Coach Stafford and Terry Rollins and Dave Watkins and Daniel Tench, Mike Wolf and Richard Tibbetts. So all those folks played a, an instrumental part or role in me and helped me develop me as a, an athlete. My teammates as well, I had some of the best teammates growing up through ordinance and then middle school and then high school. So when I think about all the practices and the time that you met with each other and, and games and wins and losses and bus rides clear across the state, uh, I wanted to make sure I showed my appreciation and respect to those guys. So for wrestling, I, I owe a lot of success to Jared Cyril's, Caleb Young, and Rusty Manis. You know, I've sparred with these guys for years, and they really helped push me and make me a better wrestler. With baseball, I was Eric B, B.J. Lloyd, Ashton Jones, one of the best pitchers uh, Point Pleasant High School's ever seen, Curtis Graham, and Justin Weaver. So me and Justin, our senior year, we had the middle infield locked down when it came to games, and turned double plays, and just not letting anything us. And for football, um, having guys like Derek Mitchell and, and Tyler Grant and Clay Krebs to look up to on the field and, and go to battle under the lights here at Point Pleasant. 
So without these guys, I really don't believe I'd be standing here today. And then a few coaches that really stood out to me and um, put forth the extra effort and was inter instrumental in developing me as an athlete and now a Hall of Fame member, um, beginning with Coach Darst. So it goes all the way back to the wrestling Bulldog days at Ordnance, um, and then the North School Pirates, and then the Big Blacks. Uh, so it was cool to kind of think back on it. Man, I had Coach Darst at almost every part of my career, which is really cool. Um, so I appreciate you and appreciate the push that you have for me and, and always trying to get the best out of me. And then funny story, one of the members I haven't coached, and this goes clear back to third grade, I don't even know if he remembers this, but it was, I think it was during the gym, and there was like a puff ball or a dodgeball, and I threw it across the gym floor and hit coach on the side of the head with it, and I'm, it was a little third grade me, and I'm just like, oh, man, I hope he doesn't bring me a new one. Then, uh, Julianne, so Mama, um, not only did she coach me uh, during wrestling, um, but for all the times she had a medical wrap, an ankle, or a wrist, or grabbed one of my contacts when they came out during the wrestling match. Um, at the time, you don't really think about those things, but looking back, I'm like, man, she really did. She did a ton of extra curricular things for me, and I just want to say that I really appreciate that, and thank you. For the talks during those times, when I'd be down and out, I feel like I was in my worst days, always say something along the lines of, well, the sun will come up tomorrow, and tomorrow will be another day. And so um, you took a pretty ticked off, discouraged guy and, and turned him into a positive guy. So I appreciate that. So thanks for everything there. And then Jack Collin, so coach, uh, you were part of literally every sport I did in high school. You taught me to work hard and enjoy the moments of success. So from baseball to wrestling to football, um, you're a great coach, you're a great person, and a great leader. Appreciate the drive that you gave me as well. So these these characteristics that um, you helped get me acquainted to, you know, I share and support the teams that I'm with professionally now to this day. Um, I actually had a conversation with a guy, I think it was two weeks ago, and he had made a mistake at work. And I asked him, I was like, do you make good grades in school? Or do you sit beside smart people? Or do teachers feel sorry for you? And he just kind of looked at me like, So I appreciate the fun times. I know we've worked hard and played hard. So thank you again for that. Along with my coaches and teammates come my biggest support system of them all, and that's my family. Uh, so I'm incredibly blessed to have not two, but four great parents in my life. Um, so I want to start off by thanking my mom, Dink, for all the extra energy you put into making sure I was prepared for all my sporting events. Uh, it includes prepping meals, laundry, I don't know how many countless hours you spent ironing shirts and dress pants and making sure that I was looking good when I went out there. Uh, and then for capturing all the moments and sporting events uh, on camera, so that took a lot of energy as well. And for just being my biggest and most passionate fan. And I'm sure you could ask any referee or umpire that uh, struck me out or called a bad call, they definitely understood her passion. So <clears throat> she always wants what's best for me and I appreciate those moments and everything. Uh, so thank you, Mom. For my dad, Mike, uh, for always giving me guidance and direction uh, when I don't always live up to my own expectations. So through all the wrestling matches and the baseball games and football games throughout high school and probably even back to middle school, my dad never missed a game. Um, so he was he was there for all of them. Um, and then for those of you who don't know, so my dad you know, used to live in Rome County. So that's an hour to Point Pleasant just for a home game and an hour back uh, to Rome County. Uh, so at the time I noticed that and recognized it. But looking back and realizing and reflecting on the time commitment that it takes to do that, and just the care and the thought that you had to make sure that you were at every game, uh, means the world to me, so I really appreciate that. Um, I was actually talking to Steve about it last night at the Goose Lodge. Um, Steve and Short Krebs, actually. So you're awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. My stepdad, Bob. Uh, I thank the big man upstairs for having another father figure in my life. So for all the co coaching moments on the side, the toughness you showed me, and just the silly jokes and the lightheartedness that you have, um, I really appreciate um, you and just all the advice that you've given me over the years. Uh, you always put over backwards for me, even when you didn't have to. And I appreciate you for always being there for me, no matter what situation I got myself into. So thank you. And my stepmom, Lisa. So I'm also thankful and appreciative to have a mom like you in my life. So she made many trips across West Virginia, watching me compete and supporting me, even 
spending this weekend uh, with her and my dad, so they now live near Cleveland, Ohio. So they traveled all the way down and then up here today as well. Um, so she's always supported me and been there for me as well. So thank you for always being sweet and sincere and, and caring for me growing up. And for my sisters for supporting me along the way as well. Uh, so Lydia, I have no idea how many hours you spent in dirty gyms or baseball fields out in the hot summer months um, growing up. And, Nine times I did, did that without complaining. So I really appreciate you doing that. I think you probably enjoyed the football games more just because they were with your friends and little cooler evenings and stuff. But I just want to let you know that I really appreciate you and your husband, Devin. Um, and then for my sweet niece, Elena, thank you for walking me out the field yesterday. Appreciate that. <clears throat> so I never was the biggest, fastest, smartest, or strongest athlete. However, like the coaches, teammates I had in this community here, um, the fans that were surrounding me, all of you guys helped bring out the best of me and recognize some potential that I had there. So I really appreciate everything that you guys have done over the years. I truly don't think I'd be seeing here today or had all these stats that Coach Collin mentioned without all of you guys and the coaches that I mentioned earlier and my teammates. So thank you for that. That's what motivated me and inspired me to really give 100% and, and try to win at everything I did. So no matter where I live or places I go to or the experiences I have, I always tell people, West Virginia, I'm from West Virginia and Point Pleasant is home. Uh, so I'm looking forward to many great memories to come and uh, just want to say that for decades from now, let's continue to say let's go big blocks. So thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce the next inductee, and I've got all this information on here that I could read to you, but I decided I want to go do that. Billy Cottrell, the principal here at Point Pleasant High School, there's, there's a lot of stories behind his career here, particularly as a football player. And uh, he was a, he had quite an array of uh, teammates back in that day. And one particular story I will share with you. Um, the rivalry with us and the guys across the river was quite intense in those years. And Billy had a teammate who was also one of our quarterbacks. He played a lot of positions. A boy by the name of Jimmy Oliver, who's no longer with us. But Jimmy had a and I didn't find out about this until much later, but he had uh, the habit of wagering on the game. And I guess he had a, a pretty good wager on this gal place game that night. And he told these players, I found about this later, he told them in the huddle that there was no darn way we were losing this game. And I think he scared Billy because in one particular play, it was a critical third down situation that we were trying to get a first down, and Billy was getting the ball. And he put the ball in there, and Billy fumbled the ball around and ended up with the ball on his back with both hands back there and got first down. But he said there wasn't any way he was going to drop that ball and have to face Jimmy about that. He was quite a football player when he was in high school here, and he continued his career and had a successful career four years at level. And Billy decided to go into uh, education and to become a coach. Now he, along with uh, two other teammates on that team, uh, were all going into the coaching. And after they graduated, uh, they came back here and served as volunteer coaches. This was during this 1993 season. Now, Jamie Higginbotham and Ken Price, you know, never get excited about anything. Uh, they're always calm. And take care of things. Well, we're playing at Spencer High School. I think it was the last year of Spencer High School. And at one point during the game, I turned around, and I don't know whether he was excited for the play that the young man made or whether he was mad about what he didn't make, but Billy was about 10 yards out on the field and had this guy jumping up and down, and I don't know if he was shaking him or just congratulating him, and I had said, Billy, you can't do that. 
and uh, he told me later he calmed down a great deal since then. But he has. He's done a terrific job here. He's been principal here for, I think, it's been 12 or 13 years, and uh, we have had a tremendous uh, amount of success with our athletics here in that time period. And uh, it's my honor to introduce our inductee tonight, Billy Cockrell. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was scared to death, but I don't want to drop that ball uh, for anything. I was sitting down and trying to think of what to say um, this evening, and, it, and it's kind of funny, I guess, the older I get. I keep thinking, and I've said this a lot of times, especially with my family, I know I've lived a great life, I just can't remember most of it. Um, but uh, I do thank God for, for the memories and the places that he's put me and allowed me to be. Um, but first of all, let me thank the committee, one, for nominating me, voting me into this uh, prestigious class, the Hall of Fame. I look at uh, all the guys and, 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 and girls that are, that are uh, inducted in here, and it is an honor just to have my name mentioned in the same sentence. Um, I, I honestly uh, say that. I want to just take a moment and thank my family, my mom, my dad, my dad for the sacrifices and all that that he made uh, for me growing up. It's hard to believe, but 89, this is my 30, 30 years out of high school. Uh, but I always go back and I think the sacrifices that my, my dad made in order uh, for me to, to do what I do and to, and to play sports and that sort of thing. I thank my mom uh, for her prayers uh, more than anything. I thank her for... Uh, um, for coming and getting me. I mean, there were days we lived out Sand Hill, seven or eight uh, miles out, that it was a major inconvenience sometimes, but, but for all the things that they did in order that we could play sports. I thank my coaches, the people that uh, around uh, that helped me. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny because I say I've forgotten a lot of stuff, and I really, I really have. And it's kind of funny that you, you remember the small things in life, and as I was sitting there thinking about all the uh, all the memories I made in high school and college and that sort of thing, I come back and I, I, I just continuously think of a moment when Coach Rollins and Coach Stafford sat me down one day that they were worried about the direction and some decisions I was making at that time in high school, and and uh, let me know that I needed to get back on the right track. And that is one of the memories that just just kind of stick with me. Sometimes I can't remember to put the toothpaste. Uh, cat back on the toothpaste, uh, but I can remember these little things like that. And I heard a preacher say uh, not too long ago that things could have been a whole lot, the story could have been a whole lot different. And I think had they not sat down with me and, and talked to me like that, my story could have been a whole lot different than what it was. Uh, people like Coach Doris, Coach Colin, um, I remember Coach Doris, when I think about um, one of my greatest, probably my greatest feat in, uh, was throwing the shot put and the discus on the track team. But it was, it was your first year coaching, wasn't it? And he taught me a lot about hard work and what it meant to push yourself. Because he pushed me to the limit. I mean, there were days that we would we'd be out there throwing the shot put. The whole track team had left. Um, and it was us throwers, or it was me and him out there with headlights. Uh, out there in the gravel, throwing the shot put. He said we were throwing a hundred times, uh, live or die, and it would be seven, eight, nine o'clock sometimes until we got home. But but he uh, worked me relentlessly, and I I thank him for that. I really do. I thank him for that uh, because it taught me a lot. Um, you know, I told, I said about my mom. I can remember. High school, and I appreciate, I, I was a lineman from when I was just a little guy. When I was in junior high, I remember the coach at that time had said, hey, I always want to be a fullback. Always want to be a fullback. And uh, the coach at that time said, 
uh, you're Ben Cottrell's brother, you go with the lineman. And it stuck with me forever. But I always had in the back of my head, I wanted to be a fullback. And uh, my junior year, in the middle of our junior year, Coach Zaffer came to me and said, I want you to play some fullback. And he, and he gave me that chance. And I appreciate that because uh, uh, we, did pretty, we did pretty good. I mean, we were, we were even uh, my senior year. And uh, I had some small colleges look at me and all that. And uh, I went to visit a couple. And I went to Glenville. And at that time, uh, there was a coach there. Wasn't real happy with it, but he took us in. He took me and some of the other recruits in the room, and he said, uh, if you guys were, in so many words, if you guys were any good, WVU would have recruited you, and Marshall would have recruited you. And I just remember that going through me and thinking, there is no way that I'm playing for this guy. There was no way. And I kind of shut it down and all that. And it wasn't a few months later, I remember, I don't remember exactly where I was at. I was walking at the, at the time, our garage was my bedroom. Uh, been fixed up in my bedroom. I was coming in. I remember my mom, my mom meeting me there and saying, Bill, I've been praying and I think Glenville is the place that you need to go to college. And I just remember being so down. But I, I, I respected that and so that's where I decided to go. And I tell you, it's neat to look how, and I don't mean to preach to you, but it's neat to look at how God puts certain people and certain places in your life and you can see how you end up where you're at, where you're at today. So I went there, and the first year was horrible. We were 0-10 with this coach. Um, there was very little discipline, and I, I will swear to you even today, I think their goal was just to try to get people to quit, because it was 100-yard uh, bear crawls, and I just remember thinking in my mind, this cannot be what college football is about. It just cannot be. And um, well, a matter of fact, our, our Pep up speech before one of our games. We were up to play Concord University, which was always in the playoffs. But our pep up speech that day was, guys, we're probably going to get beat pretty bad. <laughs> um, this is the way it started. And I thought, what in the world have I done? But I was able to start on special teams and I played a little bit of fullback that you're enough to letter. But I just remember thinking, this cannot be what this is about. Um, but then I had the opportunity. He was fired. They brought in a new coaching staff in, Coach uh, Rodriguez, and, and I got to see Coach uh, Dean Hood yesterday, um, and just opened up a window of opportunities for me, and really got me to fall in love again with the sport of Coach Stafford, and Coach Darst, and all the coaches, and Coach Rons, and Coach uh, Ross, and all them that, that I fell in love with in high school. Just been able to fall in love with it again, and then after that, come back and be able to coach, and probably one of the greatest years is when we were the student assistant there. Yes, I had to calm down, and I've calmed down a lot, I swear, since then. Um, but it was it was absolutely a great a great year for us, and, and had the opportunity and to to uh, be under and see the rebuilding of a of a football program, or the rebuilding of a program that has, that has helped me in my job today. It's helped me. I mean, we met with um, businesses the other day that said team building, how that is an important skill that everybody needs today in the workforce, no matter where you're at. And just how you can see how, how um, being put and aligned, your life when it's aligned with the right people in the right places and the right opportunities. That brought me back, took me to South Carolina, took me to the Eastern Panhandle, and then brought me back home where I can remember as a uh, as a kid in junior high um, saying, man, one of these days I would love to be the principal at my high school because it just felt like the Point Pleasant Big Blacks was the greatest thing in the world. And here I am, 13 years later, blessed with the opportunity to be here. Such a such a great time. I mean, looking at five state championships uh, since then and, and, and five state runner-ups and a number of regional championships and all that, and being able to see uh, Philip Allen and then win the state championship, Derek Mitchell win the state championship, uh, being able to see Tessa White hit that home run, I mean, one of the highlights, I think, uh, of my career here is being able to see, is to, is to see and witness that and just to be a small piece in the background of, of seeing that. But what a, what a great opportunity uh, to do that. And I say, I did it on this finish. Somebody asked me, uh, just with some of the success we've had in there, what the key was 
uh, to that as far as being a principal. And, and I said, one is it's having a great athletic director and having great coaches and they just stay the heck out of the way and let them do what they do. What they do. And uh, that's absolutely proved to be successful with that. But I just want to thank you. And again, I'm humbled um, to receive this award. And uh, thank you. story parallels that story. It starts out with a, uh, a story about gal blues. Uh, my, I'm going to introduce Ronnie Duncan. Uh, when Ronnie was a senior, we weren't having quite the success that uh, we've seen lately here. Ronnie was uh, fortunate or unfortunate enough to be probably the last person that will be inducted and in, got to play for Bob Church or Ian Digwear. And his senior year, he intercepted a pass against Cowboys, ran about 39 yards for a touchdown. I'm not sure what the final score was, but I bet we didn't win the game anyway. He also continued his career at Glenville State, played four years of uh, college ball there, got his degree in education, went into education and coaching, as Melly did. Uh, there comes the divergence. Uh, Ronnie decided to give up education and went into the family business. There are a few of you probably here old enough to remember Red's Meat Market. Uh, that's where Ronnie got his start in the grocery business and uh, he continues that today. He uh, works for Ballard uh, Meat Company and uh, he's here along with his wife and his two children. Um, and he, uh, I asked him last night, he's a couple of years older than me, I would say, I think it's two. I asked him when he was going to retire, because I've been retired for four or five years now and enjoyed every minute of it. He said he wasn't going to retire until the boss made him mad. So whenever that is, I suppose he'll get out of it. But Ronnie, would you please come up? Ronnie Duncan. First, let me say <clears throat> thanks like uh, Bill did for being inducted. Uh, also, to my mother. There we go. I have a hard time doing this at days sometimes. You know, as she, and then dad, dad, was, dad was supportive too, but he always said to store cut me while I might play ball. So, anyway, mom was at every game. My junior year, it's my senior in high school, and local, thank local. She also put together the MVP high school book and the two co-captains books, the scrapbooks, not knowing that I would get one of them, but she did it anyway. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, when you're seven years old, you're not supposed to do this. Anyway, let me get back to the rest of it. But thanks, Mom. Uh, un unlike Bill, I did go to Glenville too. But my coach at that time was Bill Hamlin, who just passed away a couple of years ago. He also took me in the room by myself and said, a little different, Bill. He said, Ron Duncan, you're probably the best football player in West Virginia, and we want you. I'm <laughs> Uh, but like like Bill, I went to I went to visit that state and went to Marshall and went to Glenville and two uh, West Point two Point Pleasant players are what kind of convinced me to go to Glenville. And their comment was, "Now, Ron, you could be a little fish in a big pond, or you could be a big fish in a little pond." So I decided to go to Glenville. But that was, and you all know both of them. I'm, I'm sure it was Dave Rawson 
and Joe Smith, and they both played linebacker there. But it was, uh, Blimble was a great place. I loved it. I go back now and look and think, yeah, I really love it. <laughs> After you see a lot of other things. Uh, and I, I got my master's in tech at Virginia Tech. But I coached down in, in southern West Virginia and uh, southwest Virginia for seven years. And it, it was enjoyable. Uh, I loved it. I, when I quit, I missed the kids thoroughly. But at that time, uh, it, the salary was not that great. I had two children. And <laughs> it was kind of funny when you looked at it. But what I was making that last year, they, they could have gone to school and reduced lunch. It has changed some now, and that, that, that's, that's good. My daughter teaches now as well. But, and I went through that, and I did go back into the meat business and the grocery business, which is why I'm at Ballard's now, and then run the operation down there. And like Glenn said, a little bit different than what I said, but when they ever call from Birmingham and, and say, they don't like what I'm doing, and I will tell them where the car kick, where the car is, and the keys are on the floor mat because I don't have to work, which is which makes it really nice. But it, it's I don't know, Point Pleasant, that's home. Now never came back hardly at all to went to London. Uh, we've lived in quite a few places, but it's always been home. And one thing I remember more than anything else, and, and I see it. I've been back to some ball games and even then. And as Glenn said, uh, Bob Scherzer was the head coach of my junior year. Dick Ware came in my senior year. Neither year were we very successful, but we were always supported by the community. Always. As is today. Now, I'm going to tell you a little quick story about when I did coach, which I think is kind of funny. And it was the very first year I coached, and I had just finished play, playing ball with my boy, 44, well, he, well, 10 months earlier. But anyway, small school down in southern West Virginia. It was at a two-year high. They would only had football three years. So we were going into the fourth year. They had never had a quarterback. It was, some of y'all remember this, it was the old single wing. And I had a kid come up when we we first got them together. And he said, Coach, I will be your quarterback. And I said, oh, okay, when well, he's a quarterback last year, he said, oh, we didn't have one. And that's when I found out about the single wing. But anyway, we we had them in to get their physicals. I said, we, their, the coaching staff was me. And, uh, but then when it was time to start practice, only 10 kids showed up. And so I asked one of them, I said, well, where's the all? There were 32 kids here. Happen. Oh, coach, they won't be here until they get back or in. I said, what? <laughs> they won't be here until the tobacco is put in the barns. Well, they showed up, everybody showed up four days before our first game. So we were having our first game, you can imagine what that was like. <laughs> the first play of the game, we were on defense, the referee throws a flag. All sides, right defensive end. Next play, he throws the flag. Coach, you're right, off, right defensive cans offsides again. Third play, those flank again. Coach, you're right defensive ends offsides again. So I brought him out, and then to this day, I remember the little, little fellow's name. He was an eighth grader. His name was Gary Glover. And I looked at him and I said, Gary, you're lining the false sides. And I turned back to look at the field, and I feel a tug on my shirt. I looked down at him and said, Coach, what's offsides? <laughs> that is a true story. But again, thanks very much, and I appreciate the honor. And uh, it, it's, it is an honor. And to be from Point Pleasant and to come back to this, and to, uh, to know after the game last night, and I've been back to a few other games, that the support is as strong now as it was then, if not stronger. Thank you.
next nominee, or inductee, I should say, I had the pleasure to coach. And if I were to describe Mr. Gardner, I would say he was probably a true blue collar player. He was that kind of guy. And he, he had a successful career here. He was captain of a very special football team. And I see several of his teammates in attendance tonight. But that was a team in 85 that became famous for the field goal that didn't count. And a lot of you will remember what I'm talking about. But they had a, a great year. And um, the one story that I, I wanted to tell, and I know this has been told many times, and I think we were playing Milton when this happened. Uh, is that the right one you guys remember? Yeah. And uh, it was a big, big down. And I think they were trying to throw a screen pass, and Gardner intercepted it. And he took off down the field. I don't know how he ever got down to that end zone. And then the, as the years go on, the distance he traveled and the speed at which he traveled have all increased dramatically. Yeah. And, and they will all tell you that. But he did make it. But I do remember, I think he collapsed over the goal line uh, when he finally got there. And I'm not lying. That, that, that really happened. And after graduation of Steve has, has always been around and helped uh, with all the athletic programs here. And it's been, you know, he's been, I don't know how many years coached he in the filming for you up there. Uh, yeah, at least. And he was doing that from before then, and I don't remember the exact number. But it's my pleasure to introduce our inductee tonight, Steve Gardner.
more people out there like that that helps move these kids out there because they don't get enough of it. But again, everybody, thanks. It's a pleasure for me to uh, introduce the next inductee into the side, Derek Mitchell. Uh, I had the privilege of coaching Derek in uh, football and wrestling. Uh, in football, it seemed like he couldn't get away from me or I couldn't get away from him. I'm not sure which way it was, which was I coached in junior high. And then uh, I moved to high school about the time he moved to high school, so he couldn't get away from me. Uh, in football, just, just an outstanding player, athletic on offense, and when I had a junior high, uh, one down he may be quarterback, the next down he may be the running back, the next down he might be the receiver. When he got into high school, about the same thing happened. One down he might be quarterback, next down the receiver, next down running back. You know, he, he can play those positions and play well, and, uh, but he made his living on defense. Uh, defensive back, uh, just one of the better ones we ever had come through here. And uh, of course he went on to Marshall and uh, walked on, earned a scholarship, and really contributed on special teams down there in defense uh, in his last couple of years there. Just an outstanding job there. Uh, but in wrestling, uh, Coach uh, Derek, uh, his freshman year, he placed fifth in the state, uh, did not wrestle his sophomore year, come back out his junior year, and uh, really had an outstanding uh, year and ended up state runner up at 171. And uh, he really wrestled a really good match in the finals. It was like a 4 2 score uh, battle with a uh, two time state champion and right here with him. Come back the next year and uh, returned at 171. And being state runner up, you know, he had to be considered as one of the top favorites at that weight. Uh, Independence had a, a state champion, uh, Jake Justice. Philippe may mention his name a little bit ago. Um, and uh, he was a state champion at 152 or 160. I can't remember which one. I might have been at 152. Derek's shaking his head, so I might be right. And uh, we know that was probably going to be uh, possibly the best to the state. And the first time Derek wrestling was our Point uh, Pleasant Olympic Pool tournament right here. And Derek lost the match 5 2, I believe. A couple weeks later, in the finals at the Jackson County Invitational, Derek got a chance to wrestle uh, Justice again. It's not quite as good that time. Uh, he ended up losing 9-4. Uh, and then we come back a couple weeks later, and they both fight up with the WXAZ. And uh, that match was a war. Even though Derek lost the match, he lost it 4-2. But in that match, everybody's going to throw lunch, right? Um, he ran his teeth through his bottom lip. Right? And it wasn't pretty. Uh, we packed him. We taped him. He was going to finish the match. He did, all right, but he ended up losing that match for two. Uh, regional champion, and then, uh, of course, Justice was regional champion. Now, think about the state wrestling tournament. They don't see it, okay? It's literally a peel that they roll out. Whichever one comes out first is how they put the brackets together, whether they peel one, two, or three. And we weren't sure before if, uh, if Justice would be on the same side of the end of the bracket that you can catch him in the semis and they both win one on through there, or if it would be the opposite bracket was the opposite bracket, which we were very thankful for. for. Um, about this time, uh, Derek had uh, a tendency to find ways to amuse himself. I would like to say that. Um, from time to time, he wasn't where he was supposed to be. And I think Mr. Codrell, I think you caught him at a local restaurant during lunchtime. Is that right? Okay. And he had to spend a little bit of time in detention, if I remember right. And of course, Derek's nickname at that time was McMitchell. And of course, his mother then tagged him with another one, said he was all over the place, he's bouncing all the place. I think he's got ADHD. So his nickname for a while that was Addy. Okay, so a couple things with it. But uh, with uh, wrestling uh, Jake Justice in the finals, he's lost to him three times during the year. Now, of course, there's three times in just practice, it don't count to the end. That's where we're at, all right? And of course, I was reminding Derek that uh, Alex Reed, our first state champion, uh, had lost four times to uh, Chris Johnson, the Nitro. 
And the only time Alex Reed ever beat Chris Johnson was in the state finals in 1998 in a 3-2 match. As a matter of fact, Alex and, and uh, Chris wrestled in college. Chris beat him there too, all right? But uh, the only time it matters is in the state finals. And the match started a little different. Uh, we practiced a move that's called snatch a single. Basically, you're just trying to be quicker than the other guy, and you literally try to catch the heel. And Derek faked one way, he got just as off balance. He cut across and got the first takedown. Now, this is the first time in four matches he's wrestled that he scored first. All right, kind of changed the momentum a little bit. And then the big match, the big, big move you hit was in the second period, he locked out a cradle and sent him back. And he held, a, to me, it felt like an eternity. Okay? Probably a minute plus. But the advantage of that was he wasn't scoring. All right? He had the three near fall. And I remember at the end of the match, probably 10 seconds left, uh, Justice reached up and unsnapped his head here. Derek had won the match before the 7 3, and become, uh, I think, our ninth or 10th state champion at that time. And it's really a pleasure for me to introduce you. So, uh, if anyone that knows me knows I can talk to anyone at any time about anything. I'm going to try not to do that tonight. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet to the point. Uh, especially because I don't really want to tell any crazy stories of myself or Philip. Um, I just want to thank the committee. It's, uh, it's an honor, especially being inducted with uh, my classmates and some people I really look up to. And a uh, little story. Finished Coach Collins' story. Uh, so my senior year, I've got this new principal comes in. I'm like, who the heck is this guy? So before, I mean, it's pretty easy going, and all of a sudden, it's like, boom, crack the whip, everything's changed. So wrestling practice, Rusty Manis and Donovan Powell. Come back, and Mr. Cox was sitting there waiting on us. And I remember, I think that's, I don't know, I think it was like three days of ISS, maybe. But, uh, maybe we're getting more now, I don't remember. But, uh, but anyways, yeah, um, I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank my parents. Uh, they made sacrifices when I was younger and getting me into events and stuff that you don't really appreciate until you're older. And uh, my support staff, and I say, Everyone that was involved, my family, my friends, my coaches, uh, really means a lot to be up here. And uh, that's a tribute to all of you all. And uh, I can tell so many stories on Philip, and he can tell just as many as on me. He's one of my best friends, and he always will be. And uh, like I said, uh, I was a little heavier than him in wrestling, so I never got the privilege to really wrestle with Philip. I always had some great people. James Casto uh, being one of them, Brandon Warren, uh, he was like a brother to me, and he talked to me before that match and essentially told me the same thing. So, uh, but really something that I learned um, in wrestling, and it started way back when Coach Darcy brought, I think, me, Philip, and Jared up from the fifth grade to wrestle in middle school, at least practice with each other. Um, I've never been, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be inducted here, but I've never been athletic person. I've never been the best at any specific sport. Um, but one thing that I was taught and I learned was you can outwork anybody. And part of that was because guys like me and Philip and, and, and our friends, Jerry, BJ, guys we grew up with, were more competitive than any person I've ever met. Like we, No matter what it was, uh, I'm going to see if I can run faster, see if I can jump a pole with a further than you. See what, I mean, it didn't matter what it was. So, But Started back when, with Coach Darst at middle school. Um, he really pushed us and pushed us and pushed us. And it kind of instilled something 
knowing that you could outwork the other guy. And that's kind of how we did it. I mean, look at us. I mean, we're not necessarily always the best athletes, but we could outwork everyone. And I kind of tried to took that with me even today at work. I work in a pipeline. And, um, I'm blessed with a great job, and I'm blessed with a great crew. But every once in a while, you still have to try to show them that you can outwork them. And I still try to do that to this day. I want to say a special thanks to Mama. You, uh, she's making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day before practice. Um, probably not the best thing for maintaining weight, but I was hungry and she loved me for it. So. But uh, I want to thank Coach Dars, Coach Colin, Mama. I want to thank my parents. You know, without you guys, you really pushed me. I want to be the first man today. And uh, I tried to be a role model for my brother. He was a lot younger. That when I was his age and stuff like that, I tried to be, but I never truly really understood until I'm older now. And so, I'm trying to do the best I possibly can for that. And I want to do that for everyone else. And so, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate it. It actually means it really means a lot to me. So, thank you. My name's Randy Riddle. I get the uh, pleasure of introducing Barry Redman, lifelong friend. Uh, we, uh, he and I have been together our whole life. We went to grade school together. We, uh, junior high, high school, we played football together. We married sisters. We worked together. We rode to work together. So we know each other. Uh, Jim Tatterson called me and he wanted me to introduce Barry. And, uh, and, and I absolutely was honored to do it, or I am honored to do it. Uh, it's all about football that happened 45 years ago. So it took me a little while to remember some football stories. Uh, Barry was named captain of our team. Now, is it because he's charismatic, a man of high moral character? Some of that applies, but no. <laughs> to know why he was the captain of our team, you had to have him on shoulder pads and a helmet, you had to be on the defense, and you had to try to stop him when he had the football. Right, Charlie Perry? That's right. That's right. So he was the best player on the team. After high school, he went and played college ball. Uh, I went to school in Chicago. He went to West Virginia Tech. I come in one weekend just to see him play. Uh, I went down there and he was a freshman. He was playing both sides of the ball. He was calling the defense as a freshman. He was calling the huddles, calling the plays. So they knew why he was a good player. I mean, they, you know, that's pretty outstanding. Um, he does have some weaknesses when it comes to football. I'm a lifelong Cleveland Browns fan. Guess who he roots for? Pittsburgh. A few years ago, I think it was maybe 20 years ago, he started helping Rick Simpkins call the games on the radio. Well, you know, we, we got off work. He started heading there, and he was looking. He was running late. He slid his truck into a guardrail on the bridge, running late for him to get to that game. So he's very passionate about the game. Uh, you want to know how passionate he is about the game? You just got to come to a family event, a dinner, or something like that on a Saturday after WVU gets beat. The passion still exist. I lived in Alabama for a few years, and uh, every football season I would get a text from him. He would keep me updated on Point Pleasant scores, Point Pleasant games. Then I learned he 
and could listen to them on the radio. That was pretty cool. But anyway, after all these years, he's still passionate about the game. He was one of the best players on the team. And I think you guys made a great choice when you chose Barry Red. Barry? So uh, 
I heard Coach Burr say, they cut two of them. And uh, Coach Burr said, that's right. And uh, so we, after the break, we come back for second, second practice that day. Coach Woods looked at me and said, "Go to your gun with the backs. So that's how I become a fullback. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it was a real honor. And uh, I got voted as a captain my senior year. We didn't have a real, real good year, but we were really close. I mean, we lost really, really tough games. Uh, Burke, 7 to 7. Nitro, 7-3. St. Albans, 14-13. Then we got a butts kicked by Huntington High, 54 nothing. But, you know, you always got to go make one. And then Randy Warner, he's not here tonight. I saw he's in Dunkin'. So I got, I got a kind of a story about Warner. We're down in Barbersville, and Coach Ware had one state champ. That's Barbersville. Barber's come, before he comes to Warner. At halftime, we're losing 21 down. And they were pretty good. Second or third in state. So he got me, Warner, maybe Jimmy, uh, another named uh, Jimmy Chandler. We're all backs. And uh, he said, I'll give five dollars to whoever scores a touchdown. Okay. Probably not the right thing to do but then, but it worked. So we had this play called 20. It was just a, it was just a reverse up the middle, and uh, Chandler broke one man about 40 yards. So now it's 21 seven. I break about a 40 yard run. It pushed out of, out of bounds about a two yard line. Randy Warner calls a quarterback sneak. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's 21 14. So. We hold them again, get the ball. We get them, we come down the field, we're about the 20 yard run. I had this one play called 35 out. It was, it was a flat pass. I ran that pass play, get pushed out on the three. Warner calls the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the bad thing is they scored on us, made it 28 21, but we gave us a game in the second half. Why shame Warner so bad? He took me to the Dairy Queen and got me a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> he got 10 bucks, and I got a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, it worked out. Anyway, you young guys and your rational. I can tell you, that I'm, I'm really glad that these guys sitting right here brought you guys out the way it was. Okay. It just didn't, it wasn't like that back in the 60s and 70s. I got out of football on a Friday after the last game, turned her shoulder pads and her helmets in, and I'm walking down the hall of the old high school, and you had to walk right by Coach Ware's office. And uh, he's standing there at the door. He said, hey, Brad. I said, yeah, Coach. He said, be in the dressing room at 3.30 tonight. I said, what for? He said, you're going to wrestle. I said, I'm going to wrestle. So we walk in, Randy and I are going to wrestle, okay? We walk in, Coach Van Meter, Donnie Van Meter, great guy, defensive line coach. He's sitting on a chair reading a book about wrestling. <laughs> True story. He, took, he tried to teach us what a takedown was. <laughs> the only move I know was a cowboy. <laughs> that was my only move. I was 185, I was 185, I was junior, senior year, I was 205, I was a heavyweight. Anyway, old Coach Van Meter, he knew one thing. We wasn't going to get beat because we was out of shape. We jumped rope for 30 minutes before we did anything. In the last 30 minutes, we ran line touches. In about 20 minutes in between that, we wrestled. <laughs> So, it's good to hear you guys, and I know David and started the Rational Program, and it's great. It, it's really great. Okay. So, play baseball, love baseball, try to play baseball tech. Um, I was going to play two sports, and they 
they need to catch them, I'm caught all the way to Little League, all the way up, caught from Big Blacks. Uh, don't have any knees now because of it, I think, but I was going to catch from Tech my sophomore year, but our head coach didn't want me to uh, catch. He wanted me to come to spring practice, and I was the captain of the defense. So I chose football. That's what got me there. So, you know, I got a good degree, got a good job. Uh, so, got out, and one thing I really, really wanted to do was, was help. Uh, the Big Blacks got me to college, the college got me to a job, and my wife and I, we had two great kids, and I decided, you know, I was going to help. So, I come to coach and talk to coach in Africa. I'm a volunteer at Boosters, did a lot of good things, and, uh, built the building out here. I saw them still, still standing with the equipment in it. Uh, when my daughter Erin played baseball or played softball here, Randy, I went to Randy. We had one for a great company, <coughs> AP, and uh, Larry Wright was coach. Just getting ready to put this stadium right down here, and uh, didn't have any bleachers. So, AP was a great company. They, they liked helping communities. So I talked to Randy. He was superintendent of her. I said, hey, what does it mean? We've seen that block of the bleachers. So he said, how many need? I said, two, three thousand. Next week, there was three thousand. seen that block. Laying it over here. Terry Tyree, talked to Terry Tyree. He worked running for piping. And I said, hey, they need some posts for, for the gold posts for a Light post club. And uh, Terry Tyree got, got the light post here. Randy made a couple phone calls and, and AEP kind of wired them up. So it, it was a good thing. It was a good thing. I enjoyed, I enjoyed helping them, you know, with the team and with the boosters. And uh, proud, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what we did. <clears throat> so uh, Rick uh, Hamlin. I told me to keep it to 30. Coach, Coach Dar said I could have 45. But uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you stories all night. But a couple of things that, that helped me a lot. And football did it. I met great people. I still have great friends. Uh, met two of the best guys uh, besides Randy and Randy Warner and, and uh, Jim Deffinger, guys that I played football here. But I made two lifelong friends in tech that are still my best friends. One of them just retired in Georgia. I went down and did some fishing with him. So you really make a lot of lifetime friends when you play sports. And uh, I've tried to tell my granddaughters, you got to be ready. Uh, whenever it times, if you're not a starter, be ready. Practice, pay attention, work out, and be ready. I was a fullback because a guy got hurt. I was a, got in it when I was a freshman at Tech. A middle linebacker hurt his knee. I got in the second day. In the second game as a freshman, never come back out. I was on every play. Like Randy said, I, I actually played both ways. My sophomore, my freshman, sophomore year, and then my last year as I just played. But I'll tell a good story and I won't cut it in the <laughs> I see Rick's back there, Rick Simpkins. I was working at AMP, we were coal miners, and I worked underground and didn't get out to about six that night. And uh, it was going to start, uh, it was came TV, and uh, we was going to start filming uh, local stations. So Point Pleasant, Bahama, Galpolis. So Rick called my wife, Diana, and uh, he said, Barry there. And Diane said, no, he's at work. He said, okay. So the next day, he called back again. Diane said, Rick, he's still working. He'll get home about 6.30. And so he said, okay, I'll call back. Next day, Diane says, Rick Simpkins called again. I said, what's he want? He said, he wants you to be the caller guy while they're calling football games for cable TV and radio. And 
I said, <laughs> I just got kind of laughed. I said, oh, yeah, that'd be a thing. And she told me about it. She said, I told him you could. I said, oh, because of the Lord. And she said, no, because you won't put custom on it. But I was okay. Because it was a five second delay, wasn't it? You walked through the walk call, man. Yeah, I was an off call, man. So, uh, it's like tonight. I'm really nervous because I'm, I'm really thinking about what I'm, what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I've uh, had one more. Have one more. I swear, I'll make this, make this last one. Uh, my, t- my work's taken me away from home quite a bit. I've, I've really enjoyed what I've, I've done. Uh, I've worked all over the place. I, I can't tell you how. Just all over. Illinois, Louisiana, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. Got a gave a great opportunity putting new coal mines in, uh, working for a company, so it kind of got me out of everyday Monday type stuff. So wherever I went, we was putting in new operations. It usually took about a year. Then we'd move on driving slopes and putting in coal mines, 80, 90 million dollar projects was kind of was kind of neat. And so <clears throat> but it always took me away from home. So I didn't get back to see too many games in, in that seven or eight year period. But anyway, Diane can tell you this story. I'm in Wheeling, and I've always rode motorcycles. On my most, first motorcycle when I was 16. I've had a motorcycle ever since. <clears throat> but I always rode. Well, my first one was the Yamaha, then a Honda, then mostly Caps. Kawasaki 750, 800. And I was riding 1100. This buddy of mine, John Thomas, he's on the line anymore, but he, he was always a Harley guy. I really wasn't, Harley really didn't really impress me much, but you know, they were nice bikes. But I like my cow, so he was just as fun. <laughs> so anyway, Barrett, we called him Barry, because he had a big Barrett tattoo on his back. But anyway, Barry had really his bike down to get searched at Wheeling at the Harley shop. So I followed him. He was going to drop his bike off and get a search, but we were going go get something to eat. <clears throat> I walked in, saw this 2001 Air Soft Hill set on the floor. It was black and red. It was beautiful. So I went over and looking at it. This guy came over. He said, uh, what are you looking at for? I said, I said, I like this bike, man. And, uh, he said, uh, you got anything to trade? I said, yeah, I got a little of cap socket. Got it you know, for, for the price. End up getting Pretty good money out of it. And so I bought it. Bought it part of the day straight there on the spot. So about two days later, Diane called and said, We've been done. I said, I bought a Harley. <clears throat> After about a 10 second pause, she says, You bought a Harley Davidson? I said, Yeah. I said, It's beautiful. It's big black coppers. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. It was beautiful, man. There's black leather bags, that black seat, that red tank. It was beautiful. And so she said, What do you do with your other motorcycle? I said, It's all until got to work. She said, How'd you pay for it? I said, I wrote a check. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's how, that's how passionate I am about punk rock. It's really, it, it turned my life around. And so I have a lot to be grateful for. Coaching staff and all the guys that I played with. And so I want to thank you very much. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm David Darst. I'm the head football coach here, and uh, I need a night like this. This has kind of brought me off the cliff a little bit. <laughs> so, no, this has been fantastic. Man. What an outstanding class. Uh, you know, two of my guys I definitely need to mention quickly is Philip and, and Derek. Uh, what a pleasure to be, you know, watching you guys grow up and, you know, success, parents, means it's that simple. 
you know, when you got parents that support you, and you know, Philip, you did such a great job of talking about that. And Derek, I've known your family forever, and I know what kind of support you guys have had. So, you know, I've said it for a long time. Uh, me and Jack and Joey have talked about it for years. But we have parents that are behind us and uh, understand what we're trying to do. It just makes our job so easy, you know, and it lets us coach, you know. And, and for you two, you know, could be more proud of you guys. Um, you know, Ron and Bill, you two are the smartest two guys in the room. It's like everybody you know that because you're one of the graduates. You know, you have no choice, but you have to be pretty smart guys. I mean, I'm a going graduate. So, uh, anyway, uh, you know, uh, special times at Glenn Wine. Uh, memories there, you, you can't ever forget them. And uh, you know, Bill's my first guy. Uh, he was my first athlete ever coached here at Point Pleasant when I was 22 years old. And my wife, let me stay out late. <laughs> so uh, we worked, you know, we worked. We went out and we had fun. And, and uh, you know, uh, him and Bob, uh, uh, we, we had a good time. Steve Gardner, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All the years that you've uh, time for me, or filmed for me, and done all the things that's been done there, you know, all the trips you made. Barry, this is why we do it. You love football. You love Point Pleasant. And you know, uh, so do we all. That's why we're here. And we couldn't be more blessed with the community. Uh, I've always felt that way. This community here is special. And the people in this community are special people. And uh, we all love each other and, and we love our sports and we're passionate about it. Uh, and that's going to lead into what I want to introduce tonight. Uh, my mentor, Steve Sapper, 13 years ago, <clears throat> I decided I would give this thing a shot because Terry Rollins can't be a head coach. <laughs> I, can't, uh, I can't talk in front of people. <laughs> let's, let's think about that for a minute. Terry Rollins can't talk. <laughs>
wanted to take care of the, of the football facilities for us. And for the last 13 years, uh, not only has he done that, uh, he's just about been involved in anything here uh, that deals with our athletic facilities. Um, you know, he's here just about every day. Uh, all the different things you see going on at the stadium, his hands in it, all the building projects that we've been involved in, uh, his had his hand in it. Uh, him and Coach Rollins spend countless hours uh, deciding who's in charge. We know who's in charge, don't we, Coach? Uh, his, his official title is DFO, the Director of Field Operations. And he has a red old locker to let us know that is, that's his title. And, uh, you know, uh, nothing gets by without his approval here. Nothing. Uh, and he is not only uh, special to me because he's my uncle, but he's special to the whole football program. This football program looks at him, you know, uh, in a very special way because they know he cares because between him and Charles, and I know Charles is here tonight, and these guys that volunteer and just want to be around our program and are here all the time, the kids really recognize that. So, uh, you know, the only flaw I have found in him is the fact that he does like to clean. Browns. I mean, that's the only thing I can't really figure out. But uh, uh, beyond that, uh, it is my honor to introduce uh, this year's nominee to this class, Jim Stearns.
to be involved in our softball program for a while. Kind of got a little bit of everything. Coach Rollins even talked me into baseball for one year. Uh, but my daughter was a big softball player. She was part of the state championship team. And uh, anyway, uh, Tessa was a big part of that, of that time here at Point Pleasant uh, in our softball program. And we'd have a great softball program. I think it's just outstanding. And, uh, you know, that time was a special time here. And uh, <clears throat> I always kind of considered her, you know, the movie uh, Major League. In the picture of the wild thing. Okay. Well, she's the female wild thing. <laughs> My daughter caught her for two years. <laughs> uh, for two years of prom, uh, she had bruises that big on her legs <laughs> from catching Tesla. Because, wow. Uh, the thing about her that made her such a good pitcher was uh, she would throw three really wild pitches in the group scared to death of it, then the next five will go right down the middle of the plate, strike, 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 get on out of here. Then the next one might go right by your head. <laughs> and then right down the middle again. And uh, what a phenomenal athlete, you know, she she uh, definitely probably is in that top 10, 15 female athletes that's ever come through the school and without a doubt, you know, on one hand, uh, as far as softball is concerned. And, and what she did uh, at the state championship, you know, uh, <laughs> is kind of uh, unprecedented, uh, you know. And I'll read this to you, and then we have some baseball come up, except for Ward, and I'm sure he's got some, some things to say uh, about her. But uh, I, I had the opportunity to be with her uh, through, I coached uh, uh, the fall team. Uh, uh, I coached high school softball for a year while Tracy Price was having a baby. My contribution was I would go ahead in the fall and coach the girls out of season uh, in, in the Buffalo League uh, as a volunteer so those girls could stay together uh, and play in the fall. And then their high school coaches would coach them in the spring. So uh, I got a chance to really get to know her during that time. Tessa Bryant graduated in 2009 and was a member of the girls' softball team where she was a four year old. As a freshman, Tessa was voted an honorable mention on state. During her next three years of playing softball, Tessa was first team All-State, which is unbelievable. As a sophomore pitcher, she had a 1.22 ERA and had 235 strikeouts. During her senior All-State season, Tessa had a 395 batting average with 24 stolen bases and four home runs, saving her biggest hit until her final game as she hit the game-winning home run. This was her junior year. Uh, hitting the, the game winning home run in the state championship game. And also her senior year, she had a 22 and 7 pitching record with 222 strikeouts. Uh, so, without a doubt, Tessa White uh, is definitely belongs in the Hall of Fame at Point Pleasant High School. And here to accept her award is Charlie Perry. Uh, good evening. Uh, what a great uh, inductees we had tonight. Um, I'm accepting this on Tesla's behalf. Uh, I'm the one who put her name up to be voted on. I don't know her personally. I never got to see her play, but I've heard the legends. This girl is the Randy Moss of girls' softball, and uh, you can tell by her records. Three-time first team All-State. Her run average under, under, under two runs a game. Uh, she deserves it. And, uh, I'm kind of rooting for the other dog to get her in there, get her nominated. We pushed her through the first time. I'm so proud of y'all for doing that for her. I wish she could be here, but uh, hopefully the Lord will get back to her that we honor her. Yeah. 
Jefferson and I have a duty to the President of the Hall of Fame. And you love me. Uh, I like to help us to get a round of applause for all the good we've done these. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that I would like to do was uh, to thank you for some attention to what we did here here tonight. Uh, these things don't just happen by themselves. First of all, I would like for all of the current, not the ones that just got inducted tonight, but all the Hall of Fame members that are here to please stand up. I know a lot of us know who you are, but a lot of people here don't know how many people actually are Hall of Fame members that are here tonight.
big shout out and a thank you to Ed Love, our photographer. He's been doing this for a while. And somehow, Ed, I don't understand how you explain you could be 90 years old and pull a hamstring, so I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, well, I'm just, just, just checking. But, uh, thank you so much. Now, I've got some cards and I'm going to give them to the inductees and we can email him with your email address and he will get you pictures for this induction ceremony tonight and last night. And they will go it'll be like online or a cloud or whatever. You can go and see any pictures that he's been taking all year. And I've got those, if you'll remind me, I've got those at the table. Uh, the Moose Club last night came from the first forest to come and have an after party. There was a little pizza shop next door to it. It's the first time I've been out there, but they helped us provide some pizza. Uh, the current Hall of Fame members, you know, this voting process is, 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 is a little tricky and it's, uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of work, but we we depend on the votes, the absentee votes from all the, the, the Hall of Fame members. And so you guys are just inducted this year. Please know that on you as, as we go forward to be able to uh, go through all the bios of the nominations that we send you and, and, and pick your, your, the people that you are voting for and send them back to us. So that's the only way that we can help create things like this tonight and have a, a good successful class year and year out. Um, Papa John's Pizza, Village Pizza, Sam's Hot Dog Stand for providing different foods for last night. Uh, our custodian for helping to clean up here after we get done here in a few minutes. Janet Williamson, she was a big help behind the scenes trying to get in touch with, with one of our uh, inductees and, and she worked overtime because I hear she does a lot of work out here for the, the games every, every week. So thank you, Jim. And then the cake tonight was provided by Piggly Wiggly, I'm told. So thank you, Piggly Wiggly, for the, the Fun Pleasant Hall of Fame cake. Uh, finally, to the new inductees, we hope you've had Please don't be a stranger. Uh, we welcome back any time, and we hope that uh, you continue to come back and see us and, and, and help us in the voting. And at that time, I am about officially done. Steve, do you have anything that I've missed or anything that you need to pass on? All right. Thank you all so very much. It's been a great time. <laughs>